Welcome to Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes. This is a list on improving galactic challenges. The biggest issue with galactic challenges is not the rewards. The biggest issue with galactic challenges is that it's not replayable. Better rewards doesn't fix that. Better rewards just means you play the event, you get the rewards, and you move on. And you just feel a little better about it and a little less gross. So we're heading into the final stretch of this first week of Galactic Challenges. One of the things that I'm seeing is that this event is way too long. It makes no sense why they gave us a seven day event when they gave us no reason to come back for day two, day three, day four. Even come back for a couple hours after the first event. There was no reason to replay it. This game mode needs to be replayable from a reward standpoint from a challenge standpoint and from a testing standpoint and this game mode currently fails on all three counts. As it stands this needs to be a two-day event that changes all of the time. I have no idea why CG thought it would be a good idea to give us this game mode then disappear for a week and not think about what kind of fallout they would be getting. Like I get they need to do some testing, give us two back-to-back -back two day events with crap rewards and let do that for your testing. Don't do the seven day version. Next up is relative difficulty. There needs to be an effective challenge at each tier with its corresponding gear level. Tier 4 should be difficult for gear 12, tier 3 should be difficult for gear 11, and so on. Right now that's not the case. What you see in this footage here is my mostly gear 8 Phoenix team, Ezra's gear 11, Chopper's gear 9, handling tier 3 without much issue. You can see with the Separatist team that they are level 80, which to me makes no sense. They need to be level 85 because if you think about it, that first year of gameplay after you reach level 85, this is going to be the tier that is going to be your biggest challenge. Early game players are going to be spending a lot of time playing tier 3, but right now it's only calibrated for somebody who just reaches uh, level 85 instead of playing for a year, six months to a year and a half at this level where this is going to be the tier that is going to provide the most challenge for the bulk of their roster. And right now they have ignored early game and mid game players with how they've calibrated this. Right now if you don't have relics, you're not gonna get a challenge until you, until you get to that standpoint and that's not good enough. I'm gonna let this play out a little bit more uh, just so you can see how this Phoenix squad is able to handle things. Like I just come through and I'm able to handle this. Like I wanna see different Zetas. I want to see, make sure all the Omegas are. I wanna see better mods. Like we don't know how this team is currently set up and what kind of challenge they're going to provide in the long term. And that's what needs to be seen here. Next, let's talk about modifiers. What I wanted to see in modifiers was a lot of imagination and creativity and some fun. What I was hoping to see was that these player modifiers or whichever modifiers were going to make it so that the squads we brought in were fundamentally different than the squads we typically use. I did not want to use Darth Revan or Palpatine lead playing this event, and I did not want them to be the best leaders for this event. I wanted the modifiers to change how I use Sith so that I was using like Darth Sidious lead or Savage Opress lead or whoever. Make the modifiers crazy to so that we need to rethink how we use each faction in order to beat the event. This next week we're going to be using the bounty hunters and what I would love to see is that we're going to be using Zam or Aura Singh or Embo or whoever as the primary leader for this event in order to synergize with the modifiers. What I don't want to see is Bosk or Django. I use Bosk and Django in territory wars, in Grand Arena, in assault battles, and I'm tired of it. I want to change how I use the, the team. I'd like the Galactic Challenges to give me an opportunity to do things differently than I already do every single day. One of the things that they teased uh, when they announced the event was this modifier here. This is an 
emperor or an empire modifier that grants taunt to the empire leader when an empire ally dies and is revived. Like, that could potentially mean that Palpatine is not a good leader for the Empire faction because of his relative fragility. It might mean that Tarkin or Krennic or someone else is a superior leader when this modifier is applied. And that is something I would love to see. Like Maybe a little more obviously in this specific scenario, Thrawn becomes a good leader because if he has Fracture, he's countering all the time. I think maybe with the Zeta or not, I forget. Uh, if that was a Zeta ability. Uh, but the modifier has the potential to change how we play the game, how we p approach each faction, which members are brought into each each faction and encounter, and that's what these modifiers should be doing. They should be creative and fun and change how we play the game. Next is I would love to see some enemy choice. Like if this is going to be a multi-day event, maybe day two we go against Jawas. Day three, we go against Tuscans. Have the same location modifiers, but the enemy is changing. Uh, the player modifier is staying the same. And we're getting different flavors on a similar thing based on the enemy choice changing. And since this first one was Tatooine, we could have a thematic element where we're going up against these different existing factions and getting a little bit more things to actually test out. Ideally, it wouldn't be a multi-day thing. It would be on that first day, maybe we get two or three enemies to choose from and we replay the event, changing with each faction and being able to test out different things against multiple factions. Next, if you can't actually change the gameplay fundamentally i get that this is an old game some things are not worth the expense at least trick me into thinking that you've done something different what was nice about raids or these legendary events uh, or even some of these uh, shard events like with the night sisters or the wicked shards is that we play the game from a different perspective which makes us feel like we're doing something new and different when we're playing the same game mode or the same game modes all the time with territory battles or assault battles where we have our characters in the lower left, the enemy in the lower right. Even if you change things, it feels like we're doing the same thing every single day. Collected Challenges is an opportunity to just shift the perspective, make me feel like I'm doing something different, even if I'm doing the exact same thing. Make it look different. Next, I want CG to make me feel the first time I felt and the community felt when we saw Coruscant or Concord Dawn when fleets were reworked and we saw these great new environments that just wowed us. Like CG has an opportunity here in Galactic Challenges to just give us some new artwork, make us feel wowed again. The art team, especially the background art team, is one of the strongest divisions within CG that keep delivering. Like, let them do their work. You keep telling us in all of the Q and A's how great the art team is. Let them do what they do. So now let's talk about testing. For the bulk of players, especially non-Wayo players, and players who are in the mid game, even to mid to late game to where I'm at, tier four, the gear 12 tier is where a, the bulk of the testing is probably going to be taking place because players are going to want to see how their players hold up, how these squads hold up before they take them to relics. You kind of want to figure out, is this character worth bringing up to relics before you do it? So here in this footage, I'm taking a gear 11 old Republic team that does have all of the Zetas. And Karth Zeta does synergize with the location uh, modifier, but I'm still able to handle this old Republic team for the simple reason that the Metalloid Monstrosity Zeta is not on Grievous. You see that I keep taking out characters and Grievous does not attack, which that should not be the case at Tier 4 because most players, this is what they're, gonna, they're going to be testing up against. This is what a lot of players for the most of the time they're going to be playing are going to be dealing with in Grand Arena, in Territory Wars. 
you're going to be coming across teams with metalloid monstrosity. This is similar to what I was saying in point two. These seem to be calibrated for like the first time you hit gear 12 or the first time you hit level 85 and that's not good enough. These teams should be tailored for for the bulk of the time that you are going to be existing within the mid game or the bulk of the time that you are going to be dealing with gear 12 characters and right now it's not it's next to useless S next video here is same thing with the first order this is mostly no this is all gear 11 first order they have the zetas the location modifier again does synergize with crew zeta and i do have two newer characters here with sith trooper and hux and, but they are able to just handle this team even though we just lost crew so for testing purposes tier four here does not help out or does not do anything in fact it could do some damage where if less obsessive players use galactic challenges for testing then come into territory wars and they start messing things up because they get a false sense of what an effective counter might be now feats should be fun they should be imaginative they should be creative what i want to see is what we saw when xbox first put achievements into the gaming world like Dead Rising had amazing feats. They were creative, they were weird, they were fun. But then you also saw other games that just had feats that were like, beat this level, beat this level. And they were boring and awful. And what CG has released are beat this level type of feats. And that is a waste of an opportunity and completely boring. Compounding that and making things much worse is that the way the feats are designed right now means that we have to do like late game players whales are doing tiers one two and three multiple times they have to do it two times one with a full squad one with an undersized squad in order to get the feat which is ridiculous nobody should be replaying the early tiers in order to get these feats that's just busy work and that is a recipe for boredom and CG needs to be avoiding this. Feats should be things like take out Grievous with Darth Nihilus. Get a certain amount of buffs or debuffs. Like achieve some sort of weird scenario where like Darth Scion has to take out a specific character. Something that challenges us or forces us into using the existing squads differently. Like, I want to be challenged into doing things that are fun and creative, not into doing busy work. On top of that, I don't really like seeing feats per tier. I wouldn't mind there being feats for the entire Galactic Challenge as a whole and working towards the feats in that kind of setup. This next one here it might be a little too early to say since CG, CG hasn't released the second of event yet. But I want to make sure that we're seeing unique events. I don't want to see repeating events for months. And I say this because when I try to think about the monetization opportunity for CG, the monetization only really works if the, if the events repeat. Because if the events repeat regularly, only then would you be incentivized to put gear onto random characters. If we have no, if it's not reasonable for us to expect to see this separatist or Sith event for months, why would we change anything with our gearing or where we put different Zeta or Omega materials if we don't expect to see this for a very long time? But if they were to do that, if they were to make these events re repeat, then all we have is Assault Battles 2.0, which needs to be avoided. I want something that is weird and fun that doesn't repeat. I want this to be a two-day event that is constantly giving us new scenarios. Lastly, we need to talk about rewards. 
obviously it's a problem. As I said at the beginning of the video, I don't think it's the biggest problem. What I would love to see is just a drop rate. So even if the rewards aren't good, at least we can get some relic materials. As players get more and more relics, a lot of people are, lo are running out of gear for relic materials. A lot of us, when we first saw this event and we saw the one-time award rewards plus these rewards at the bottom, we thought that was implying there was a drop rate. I wouldn't mind that even if the drop rate is only 5-10%, whatever. Giving us something would be great. What I don't want to see, though, is, is something like Marvel Strike Force's Blitz mode. I don't want character releases happening through it. Like... Blitz mode is the reason I quit Marvel Strike Force. It completely bored me. I hated it. I don't want to be forced into do, doing something boring and competing against an entire player base and seeing who is willing to waste the most time or who is willing to use bot exploits in order to take advantage. We have about eight more hours until Galactic Challenges are released at the time of this recording. I'm really hoping that we see some changes in this next round of Galactic Challenges, but I hope CG's really paying attention to the ire of the community and starts integrating some new ideas and starts making changes because right now this event is not replayable and I'd like to see some changes to make it replayable especially something that warrants coming back on day two because for me I finished everything in a couple hours I did some testing I tried out all of my weird factions the most fun that I had with galactic challenges was seeing how bad of a team I could bring into tier three or tier four and still beat it and that's not how challenges should work. Challenges should be that I'm trying to bring in a good squad and beat the, beat the tier. Not bring in a bad squad and see if I can still beat it. Anyway, this has been today's Galaxy of Heroes. Be safe out there, everyone. And be excellent to each other.